good morning dear students and welcome to the sociology class so students if you remember then we began with chapter number 4 that is change and development in rural society in our last class so in that class which was also a live class we discussed in details about the agrarian structure of rural india especially emphasizing on the caste and class structure in rural india and its impact and also its relationship with agriculture so today students we will be moving on to the next topic that is the impact of land reforms so in this topic basically we discuss about the impact of land reforms not only in the colonial era but also in the post colonial era but since from today you are starting your unit test that is why i will stick to only the colonial period so today for this class i'll share with you all the discussion of the topic the impact of land reforms emphasizing on a single subtopic that is the colonial period so before beginning with the discussion i would like to share with you all the learning outcome so after completing the discussion of today you all will be able to assess the impact of land reforms in rural india not only during the pre pre colonial period but also during the colonial period that means during the period when the british ruled over india so let us begin with the discussion so students uh, you all know that every region in india is dominated by one or perhaps at times two major groups and there are historical reasons for the same but apart from the historical reason it is also important for us to realize that the agrarian structure that means the structure of agriculture the structure of land holding everything has changed enormously over time not only has changes in agriculture been observed during the colonial era but also before the british arrived a lot of changes were there in the agrarian structure and after independence these changes became even more vivid so during the pre colonial era um while the same dominant caste were probably also the cultivating caste but they were not the direct owners of the land so the dominant caste were not necessarily the owner of the land where they used to cultivate they were the cultivating caste they were the farmers that many a times they were not the direct owners of land so who owned those land so these land where the dominant caste would usually work those were owned by the ruling groups so ruling groups consist of the local kings or princes or also zamindars so zamindars were basically the landlords or the owner of a land who were also politically very powerful in their area and usually the zamindars belonged to the higher castes so these zamindars and the kings at times they controlled the entire land where the dominant caste people would do their agricultural production and those peasants and cultivators who worked on the land of these zamindars they had to give certain amount of their produce certain amount of their agricultural production to those landowners to those zamindars or to the kings on whose land they were working so in other words they were to pay some kind of rent to the zamindars So now let us see what happened during the colonial period. So when the British colonized India, when the British came to India and started subjugating the people of India, then in many areas they started ruling through these local zamindars. So these zamindars who were very prominent in the pre-colonial period, their prominence remained as it was and perhaps it grew in many cases after the British conquered India. so the zamindars during the colonial period became a very important person a very important mediator between the farmers and the british east india company so the zamindars became so powerful that the british even granted them property rights so under the british the zamindars were given more and more control over the land than they had before that means before the british came 
So since the colonizers imposed heavy land taxes on agriculture, the zamindars used to extract as much money as they could out of the cultivators. It means that now land was not under the zamindar directly. The zamindars were indirectly controlling the land and the land directly belonged to the British. So the British, they had to collect money from the cultivators as taxes. But the British were not very well connected with the farmers because they were very new. That is why they decided to make the zamindar as the mediator. So it was the duty of the zamindar now to go and collect the tax which was required, which was fixed by the British from the cultivators or farmers. And these zamindars, while taking the taxes from the cultivators, they also took extra money from them or extra agricultural product products from them. And because of this, the, ex the zamindars, they started extracting a lot of profit from the cultivators. So the zamindars were actually allowed to collect only a fixed amount of tax, but they always wanted their profit. And since their power grew, that is why they took extra money from the cultivators, gave whatever is required to the British and the surplus, they kept it with themselves. So in this case, the zamindars became very, very exploitative and the cultivators were very unhappy with the zamindari system. So one result of the zamindari system was that agricultural production stagnated. Stagnated means it declined much during the British rule because the zamindars were exploiting the common people, they were exploiting the farmers and the farmers did not have so much money, did not have so much agricultural produce to, play, to pay surplus to the zamindars along with the tax which was fixed by the British. So that is why during the system of um, zamindari, the entire agricultural production was stagnated. It declined, it was not like it had used to be before. So that is why the British had to think of another system which was known as the Ryatwari system. So the Ryatwari system emerged because of the shortcomings of the zamindari system, because of the maximum exploitation of farmers by the zamindars when they collected extra taxes. The tax which was fixed by the British, apart from that, they also used to collect extra taxes so that it would be profitable for the zamindars. So the zamindars not only collected money, but also at times they collected the taxes in kind. Kind means through the produce that they used to do in the agricultural field. As it's shown in the screen, rice, wheat, sugar, etc. These were all taken as taxes from the farmers and the farmers were left with nothing and they were exploited. So another system called the Rayatware system was introduced. So in this system, the zamindars were removed. So there were no zamindars, no middlemen and in Instead of a zamindar, one member of the family, usually in rural India, we see joint family. So one member of the joint family was selected by the British to collect the tax from the family land. And then that tax was directly given to the British. So now there was no involvement of zamindars and that is why the people were less exploited. Because before when the zamindars were there, then they used to pay extra taxes. They used to pay money to them for doing their job. But now there was no middleman, no zamindar. And that is why the Rayatwari system became very successful in certain parts of India. But of course, it also had its shortcomings, but it was still better than the zamindari system. So this is the main difference between zamindari and the Rayatwari system and why the zamindari system was replaced by the Rayatwari system in certain parts of India. So students, this was all about the Zamindari system, the Rayatwari system and the system of collecting taxes and maintaining land during the pre-colonial and colonial era. And in the next class, which is also our live class, we are going to discuss about the changes that were brought in the land or we are going to study about the land reforms during the independent era or in the post-colonial era. But of course, you should remember that whenever you study the land pattern of India, whenever you study the land revenue administration of India, you should always keep in mind about the administration of colonial India.
because it is very important to understand the land structure, the revenue structure of colonial India, if you want to study the agrarian structure of present day. And this is because it is through a series of change starting in this period that the current structure evolved. So our current structure in independent India did not evolve overnight. It evolved because of a lot of methods of trial and error which began in the colonial era itself and which is continuing even today. So students, that's all for today. I'm not going to discuss about the land reform system in the independent India and um, I would like to end my class here today. So students, thank you so much for listening and uh, I hope that you all um, get some time to go through the PDF which I'm going to share after this video and also wish you all the best for your unit test exam today. Thank you. Have a very good day.